What's up? We're going to create a global state with context in React in this video. So let's get started. As usual, I'm going to bootstrap it with create React app. So in my terminal, I type mpx create dash react dash app, and I'm going to call it uh, global state test. Yeah. All right, that's our bootstrapped app. And I'm going to navigate inside a folder. So cd global dash state dash test. I'm going to clear the console and I open up my code editor. I'm uh, going to clean this one out a little bit. I'm going to remove the files that I don't need. I actually have a video on this also where you can create your own theme with create React app. So you don't have to do this stuff all the time. So look around my videos and you'll find that one. It's actually quite handy. Uh, so I'm going to remove uh, all of these here. I'm just going to need the index and the app.js. So I delete them. And also inside the index, I'm going to remove some stuff here that I don't need for this tutorial. Something like that. And then inside the app, I remove these ones. And for now, I'm just going to return div our app. We can start this one up to see that it works. npm start. I can bump this one up also a little bit more like this. And we have our app there, and that's great. We know that it's working. I'm going to scaffold out one more component for this one, and I'm just going to call it, uh, I think, uh, cool component.js. Uh, and I import React from React. I create an arrow function with my cool component like this, and for now I just return my cool component text. Like that, and then I export default cool component. Do some auto formatting and save it. And then I'm going to use it inside of my app file. So I import cool component from dot forward slash cool component. And I can actually, yeah, we can show it here. Like so, and save it. And there you have it, that's our cool component. No, our cool component, it should say component. Component, like so. So back to our app. And we're going to talk global state. In React, you have both local state that is local to your uh, component, and you can have global state. And global state, what people reach for before was often Redux, for example, that can man that handle the global state for you. And you have uh, reducers and stuff like that, and action creators. In this case, I'm going to show you how to create a global state with the regular use state and no reducer. Um, to be honest, I don't use the reducer that much. You also have a hook now in React that's called use reducer. So you can have a reducer also and simulate the Redux workflow. Um, but I actually don't use that that much. I like uh, the use state and to have it like um, a regular state, just that you make it global with the context. Since the hook version of React, it's become a little bit easier to handle context, and I'm going to show you that also. So first of all, I'm going to create another component here that I call store.js. So we're using the Redux um, naming convention here. We are creating sort of a store here that's going to hold our state. And this is going to be the heart of this tutorial. Because it's in here, I'm going to do the heavy lifting with the context and create a state. So first I import React as, as usual. I'm also going to import use state for this one from React, just as usual. Then I'm going to create an initial state. 
and I'm just going to call it initial state. And it's going to be a regular JavaScript object. And in this case, I'm going to add the name. And for now, I can have my own name. And then I have another property that's called email. And I can have my own email there as well. So that's good enough for now. Then we're going to create the context itself and we're going to store that in a const. And we have to export it because we want to import this context in the components that want to use it. So export const. And to keep it simple, I'm going to call it just context. And React has something that's called create context. So from React dot, we call create context. And this will create the context for us that we're going to need. And for now, we just uh, keep it clean like this. We don't send anything in here. We don't have to do that now. Uh, and of course, I have to have an equal sign there. All right. So that's our context. We create the context and keep it in this const that we call context. You can call it whatever you want. It doesn't matter. And then I'm going to create my component. It's going to be a component that we can use to wrap our application, and this component will provide our application with our state. So I create the new arrow function, call it store, and yet again, you can call it whatever you want. I just structure out the children, and children in React is a built-in prop that we can grab when we wrap things inside of this component. I'm going to show you this in a second. So we have an arrow function, and inside here, I want to create my state. I'm keeping it simple and just call it state and set state. And again, of course, you can call these states whatever you want. And we're going to call use state. That's the hook in React that we use for creating state. And for this one, I'm sending in my initial state. That's the one I created up here. And this is going to be an object with two properties, the name and the email. So that's our state. We have the state here. We do some destructuring. That's the way you create state in React, you just structure out the state, and you also just structure out the setter for the state. All right, then we return, and we're going to return from our context, we have a property that's called provider. So our context dot provider, and we're giving it a value. And for this one, we're going to give it the state and the setter for the state. So this one will provide our application with our state and the setter for the state. So we have the state and the set state, like so. And inside of the context provider, we are going to return the children. And that means that everything we wrap in our store is going to be returned inside of the context provider. And that's great. So you can't really see it now, it's getting long here. That's because I have this crazy big font now. So it's actually really hard to work with this font, but I need to have it so you can see what's on my screen. Uh, so we have the context provider. We provide it with the value of the state and the set state. And inside of the provider, we render out the children that we're going to send in to the store. So this is how you make the store provide everything to your application. And it may look a little bit uh, yeah, tricky in the beginning if you haven't worked with this before. But I think if you just look at it some more time and try it out in different uh, apps and different stuff like that, always try things out. I do it like crazy when I learn new stuff. I just create new stuff and change the things and everything like that. And you're going to understand it, I think. It's not that complicated, actually, when you get the hang of it. All right, so I save this one. We have our store. Uh, no, actually, I have to export it, of course. Export default store, like so. So that's our component. That's our store component. Uh, I save it. I go back inside of my app component, and we're going to use this uh, store now. So up here, I can import store from dot forward slash store. All right. And for now, we just have a div here, but if we wrap it in our store, instead, we change this div to our store, this cool component is going to be the children in our store. That's the one it's getting here. And we wrap it with a context provider and render out the children here. 
So I hope this makes sense. This is actually everything we have to do in the app because now I'm going to show you how we can grab this state and modify it from the cool component. Because now we have successfully created a global state and a setter for a state. That's all there is to it in its simplest form. You can, of course, and maybe you should sometimes if you're working in a really large application, uh, have some uh, more complexity to it. But this is in its simplest form how you create a global state with context in React. So let's get back inside of the cool component. Up here, I first going to import my context. From, and we have the context in our store component, in our store file. Uh, we created it here, and that's why I exported it, because we want to import it in the component where we're going to use the state. And that's the one I import here. And that means we now have access to the context. For now, I'm going to create curly braces here, like so. And in React, we now have a hook that's called use context. So this one I imported up here, and by calling use context with our context, we have an easy access to our context. It was a little bit more difficult before we had this hook, so this is actually a really great hook. So const, we just structure out the state and the set state, just as we create a regular state in React, but now we use context instead, and we give it the context. And this one will give us access to the state and the set state. Okay, and what are we going to return here? Uh, we can actually create a fragment. Don't need to have a div there. And inside our fragment, uh, yeah, we can make an h2 tag. I'm a cool component. And we have a p tag with a name, and I'm going to return from the state, state.name. That is going to be my name, as I set that as the initial state. And I create another p tag with my email. And we grab that from state email. Okay, so I can save this one and show you. As you can see here, I'm a cool component. Yeah! <laughs> and then this is actually quite a cool name also. There's some dude there that's, that has the name Thomas Webenfall. And I think he's really cool, actually. <laughs> All right. So that's my name and that's my email. So we're successfully grabbing this, these values from the global state, as you can see here, because we don't have the state in this component. We're grabbing it from the context. And this means that in every component where you want to grab something from the state, you can just import the context and you can grab the state like this. And I also want to show you how you can modify the state with a set state. So I'm going to create a button that's going to have an on-click handler. And we're going to create another function that we call handle click and click me. Like so, and I create this function here, const handle click, and it's an arrow function. It's going to be a sync because I have found a little nice API where you can get random uses, random names, and random email addresses and stuff like that. So I'm making this an async function because we're going to hit that API now. And I'm going to create a const that I call person. First, I await. Then I have to await yet again, because I'm going to convert this with JSON. So you have to await this two times, because first you await the data that you grab from the API. And then I'm going to convert it with JSON to get it in a JSON format. So await fetch. And endpoint is uh, UI names dot com forward slash api and then you have to also add question mark and x if you want to get the, for example the email address and i want to grab that one also and then i have 
.json at the end to convert it to JSON. So as you can see here, the first await is for this one, and the second await is when we have grabbed this data and I convert it to JSON. I could, of course, uh, split it up in two different uh, consts here. Maybe that would make it easier. I don't know. Uh, for now, this is good. So we can console log out the person just to see that we get some data. So I save it. And I'm going to show my console here. Click the button. And yeah, you can see here, we're getting a person here. I click again. I get another person. So it will create this random uh, fictive users for us to use in our application. And that's great. And now we know that we get this data. So we can set our state, set state with the person. And as you can see here, we have a lot of more properties here than the name and email, but it doesn't matter because it will overwrite the old ones and I will just show the name and the email. So for this little tutorial, it doesn't matter. So I save it. And if I click this one, you can see that each time I click, I get a new name. I think you can just call it if it was seven times in a minute. So it will soon break on me here, I think. Yeah, it broke there now because I called it too many times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times maybe it is per minute. Okay, I hope this makes sense. Um, to create global state with a context is actually a really, really great idea in React. And to be honest, when I have worked on really large applications, there's a lot that don't use something like Redux. You can just have some local state and you can have the global state that you want with the context. For example, if a user logs in and you should uh, keep track on the user that's logged in, you can have that in the global state. You can also have, uh, for example, different languages in the app and stuff like that. So this is cool, I think. I hope you also think it's cool. Make sure to subscribe on my channel. I will provide you with tutorials like this on a regular basis. And I also have already a lot of cool tutorials if you check out my channel. See you in another one.